Continuing our exploration into trigonometry, we're going to focus on the graphs of sine and cosine today. In order to develop this graph of the y equals sine x, we're going to return to that notion of taking a number line and wrapping it onto the unit circle. When we did that, we identified the point P, whose distance from the origin, yes, it looks like an ellipse, but you get the idea. The x value was the cosine of t, and the y value was the sine of t. And the y always has a value, whether it's some number or zero, because you're just wrapping around this circle. And we had, we could plug in any number for x to get an output for the sine of x. So these points correspond to real numbers in the domain of this sine function. So if you recall your unit circle, we're going to use the um, 45, 45, 90 triangle values and our axes values to fill in this chart. The y value that corresponds to pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 in the first quadrant. At pi over 2, which is on the y-axis at the top, that has a value of 1. 3 pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2, and y is positive in the second quadrant, so that's still positive. The sine of pi is 0 because y is 0 at pi. The sine of 5 pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, but y is negative in the third quadrant, so that's going to be negative. 3 pi over 2 has a value of negative 1, and 7 pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, but again, it's negative because it's in the fourth quadrant. 2 pi has a value of 0. So notice that we're cycling through these values. We're going up to 1 and down to negative 1. We hit 0, and then we have root 2 over 2. Now, um, sine is a cyclical function. It has a wave. We call it a sine wave. So I'm going to graph these points so you can get a picture of what the sine curve looks like. I am going to round the square root of 2 over 2 to approximately 0 0.7. It's an irrational number that is 0 0.7071 and keeps going from there, but I'm just going to use about 0.7 to get a rough graph here. At pi over 4, we're going to be at about 0 0.7. At pi over 2, we're at 1. At pi, we're at 0. At 5 pi over 4, we're at about negative 0.7. At 3 pi over 2, we're at negative 1. At 7 pi over 4, we're at negative 0.7. And at 2 pi, we're at 0. And so you can see this curve goes up, crosses through 0, comes back down, and then comes back up. And remember that pi is periodic, and it has a period of 2 pi, which means it's going to repeat. So this graph is going to repeat from 2 pi on. So you'll go up and then down through 3 pi and back up to 4 pi. For the graph of cosine, we're using those same angle measurements. They are going to be, remember that, for 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the angles were the same, and so their side lengths were the same, and so we're still using root 2 over 2. So the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. Now, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0 at this case because it is on the point 0, 1, so x is 0 at that point. The cosine of 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 again, but x is negative in the second quadrant, so it's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. At pi, the cosine is negative 1. These were at the point negative 1, 0 at pi. It's in, the, in between the second and third quadrant. 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant. That's also negative root 2 over 2 because x is negative in the third quadrant. 3 pi over 2 is in between the third and fourth quadrant. That is when x is 0. 7 pi over 4 is going to be square root of 2 over 2. In the fourth quadrant, x is positive, so that's going to stay positive. And then for 2 pi, that is at the point 1, 0, and so the cosine of x is 1. I'm going to start with the zeros and the negative and positive 1, just because those are a little bit easier to graph. Pi over 2 is 0. 3 pi over 2 is 0. Pi is negative 1. 2 pi is positive 1. And then we need to graph our square root of 2 over 2s, which we're approximating again with 0 0.7. It's going to be positive in the first quadrant at pi over 4, 
3 pi over 4, we've got that negative. At 5 pi over 4, again, it's negative as well. And at 7 pi over 4, it's positive. So you can see that we've got some sort of curvature going crossing through 0, coming back up through 0, and then cosine is periodic and it has a period of 2 pi so it's going to repeat which means at 0 the cosine is 1. So now you can see the graphs of sine and cosine. Sine starts at the origin, cosine starts at 1 um, for the value of y and starts on the y-axis at 1. But because they're periodic cosine and sine are very similar in their images. They're just shifted by a certain factor. Now I encourage you to go look and see where would you get cosine and sine to match up so that they're laying right on top of each other. You do a little bit of an adjustment, you can do a horizontal shift or translation and they will line up exactly. Here we have an image of the graphs of cosine and sine. Cosine is in red going through the y-axis at point one, sine going through the origin in blue. And so notice, like I said, they've got these valleys and peaks that are equal. Now sine and cosine are both periodic, having a period of two pi. They also have all real numbers as their domain. But notice right now their range, it's not going above negative one and one. The only values, the highest value that we have is one, the lowest value that we have is negative one. So our maximum is one and our minimum is negative one. These occur obviously at different spots for sine and cosine, but they do have a maximum and a minimum. We have y-intercepts, x-intercepts at different places, depending on if you're at sine or cosine. These are parent functions, which we can translate, which we will do later in the lesson. So that's, let's write down some characteristics of sine and cosine. To recap these characteristics that I've just written down, the domain for both y equals sine and cosine x is all real numbers. The range is negative one to one inclusive. That's why I've written brackets. It can, the graphs can achieve a value of negative one and one. They both have a period of 2 pi. y equals sine x is odd, which means it is symmetric about the origin. And y equals cosine is even, meaning it is symmetric about the y-axis. And the graphs do differ by a horizontal shift of pi over 2. Let's investigate what happens to our parent functions when we do some transformations. We're going to start off with transforming by multiplying the coefficient. What happens to our coefficient? When you multiply the graph of sine x and cosine x by a, what you're doing is you're multiplying the function value by that a. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking y equals a times whatever that function value is. We have a vertical stretch if the absolute value of a is greater than 1. We have a vertical shrink if the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1. Notice it's the absolute value. We're not talking about the sine because if we have a negative value for a, that's a reflection across the x-axis. Remember, our range is between negative one and one inclusive. The absolute value of a is called the amplitude. It's the vertical scaling factor, which represents how much you deviate from that central position of the sine and cosine wave. What happens to the negative one and one range? Are we stretching it? Are we shrinking it? Another layer in our transformations is when we multiply the x by a b coefficient. We had our amplitude. When we are taking our x value, we're adjusting the horizontal stretch and shift. So we are changing our periods here. So if you are talking about a b that is larger than 0, you're going to be adjusting your horizontal by a shrink. A b value between 0 and 1 is a stretch. The horizontal and vertical, depending on whether the value is larger or smaller, are opposites. So if A is bigger than 1, you're stretching vertically. But if B is bigger than 1, you are shrinking horizontally. So then we have the horizontal stretch or shrink. We call it our period, and we can calculate the period by adjusting by that factor of B. So our period can be found by taking 2 pi over the b value because our period is originally 2 pi and we divide it by b to find out how we adjust based on whatever that b value is. Now remember that sine is 
odd and cosine is even. So let's look at what happens when you input a negative. With sine of negative bx, that's going to give us the function negative, where we have negative sine of bx. And with cosine, it's just going to be the same thing. 